Okay, next one here is from uh, Simon. Simon is Norwegian. And um, he asked me, by the way, your name do sound Danish. Could that be right? Yes. Uh, I am originally from Denmark, but I've lived over here in the United States for about, I think, two months from now. It's going to be 20 years I've lived over here. Um, I think your videos are really great. Thank you so much, Simon. And again, this is just me trying to add a little bit more value to your Fusion 360 experience. Thumbs up if you like it. Thumbs down if you don't. Um, and if you haven't subscribed to the channel, it means the world to me if you hit the subscribe button and the little bell next to it. That way, um, you know, you will make sure you get these videos. Um, I am designing a, he's into cabinet making and he's doing a, um, he was using some five axis and he's trying to do a fillet. And I actually have a, I think I have a pretty good image. He sent me an image. I love when I get the images. Um, and I think this one was interesting. I had to show that we had to do this one. Um, because if you see here in red, I think this is a pretty normal for a lot of us to try to add like a, a transition between here and there's a lot of different ways you can do this now in most other CAD systems that I've used this could actually be very tricky and and almost to the point of what we call like um, you know master modeling we we're just talking about master layouts uh, using Rob Lockwood's techniques um, <clears throat> where we want to use surfaces and things like that but I want to show you two different ways and hopefully that is useful for you Simon so open up a new file here, get rid of the tree. So let me just model something up that is close to, close to what uh, was just provided here. So let's do, let's do this. Uh, new sketch side. Let's do a right angle that goes up like this. 100 by 100, like that. Maybe we do that was like an arc on it. So let's do an arc like this here. Q, I'm not fully defining anything. You should do that. And then we're gonna go ahead here and open another sketch on here. And what I'm gonna do is I'm actually gonna do a spline because that's what it looks, just to make it a little trickier. I didn't do a spline. <laughs> I'm gonna do a spline, I said, and then I selected the line. <laughs> Amateur, oops. Because it looks like that there's a little bit of bow to whatever it is that we're trying to do here. And let's just draw a line over here and close this off in good fashion. Hit Q and draw that out there. Okay. So what we're looking at, this is my draw up of this. Um, maybe it should be a little bit closer. If you hear a lot of rumbling in the back, I got the 3D printer going. Okay, this is maybe a little bit better. Let's look at uh, Simmons' picture again. Kind of like a transition there in red. There's a couple of different things I want you to be aware of. First of all, the standard filler command actually have uh, some pretty cool functions in here. If we go to a variable radius, you can actually start playing around with variable radiuses. What could be extremely um, helpful in here where you could go in and uh, select this line here make that a variable we could also select another edge and now I'm being like a little so you can start playing around with some of these now you might also risk that they don't completely does what you want um, but this will be my first instance is you can start playing around with these and you can actually control the curvature on the tendency tendency in here you can actually also do setbacks down here so that's a whole other kind of um, type um, if you do um, a setback one and I'm probably not a specialist in all this stuff so let's go in and select this. Um, so you can actually go and start playing with a lot of the, the different ones in here. All right, now I'm messing around and I'm not doing it right. Isn't this typical? Fillets, setback. 
variable radiuses. So we got this one here. So that's a variable. No, I thought setback needed a point. Yeah, yeah, there we go. Right? We need some points on this thing. There you go. So um, you can see here that you can, with, with setback edges, so let me just do that again. Let's delete these out again. Undo. So I'd probably be better off select the fillets, select the setbacks, select this variable radius here. For the setback, I'm actually going to select a point here. And then now, before I do the setback, this is what happens when Lars don't. There you go. And now if we make that, I'm not sure which one I'm playing with. If one of them is the fillet. I'm just about ready to abandon this. <laughs> I have to do another video on setbacks, I think. Somebody right now is yelling at me. All right, we just did it before. Okay, I'm getting an error on this. Uh, play around with the setbacks. I gotta, I gotta work on on that. The other thing I wanted to show you, sorry, um, is actually something that I think is in, more interesting. And that's using the sculpt environment to try to do what you're trying to do uh, here, Simon. If you go into the sculpt environment, we've been in here before, and uh, we go in and we select a flat face, and I'm just going to select on here, and I'm just going to draw kind of like a blanket, like this. Um, and as you probably remember with these blankets, is we can completely manipulate them by right-clicking and hit Edit Form. And what we could do was we could start playing with um, with kind of how we want that ads to be on this edge here. So let's just select this, and I'm going to hold on Alt and just get another segment here and start dragging this one out there. So what we can do in here is we can play around with this part here Let's move this up a little bit um, and we can start making the shape that you maybe want uh, this to be so I'm just making this in all different kind of weird shapes and if I exit out of it this exit becomes a uh, this is actually kind of a surface and what you could now do was, you will see if we go into bodies, this is now a surface body. Now you could do a split body and select our core body, select our face here, hit OK to cut with that. Don't have extension on. Cut with that. And now this body, and then now we actually get that shape of that blanket we just did uh, with the surface. And if you wanted to, to play more with it, we could go in, we could right click, we can edit that feature. We'll right back in where we were before. And we take this and we make it more bow shape to it. Like that. Hit OK, get out of it. So now it's a bigger piece right here. We hide that. Now you can see how you can sculpt that. I would actually be pretty big fan of using this technique um, to achieve that cutout right there uh, versus getting in and using other stuff. I hope this was useful. Uh, the filler thing, I got to practice a little bit more on my setback fillers, but that is also an option in there. All right.